Welcome everyone to another Star Wars The Old Republic video and this is going to be an exciting pack opening video where we're going to be looking at the ultimate crates. Now I'm going to be opening up 10 hyper crates in this video but obviously I'm not going to bore you guys with watching me go through 10 hyper crates that would probably make the video extremely long and wouldn't be very interesting to watch. And the point of this video isn't really to view a pack opening but rather I'm going to be opening up 10 hyper crates with the hopes of doing some basic analysis at the end of just how good the RNG is. So I'll be opening up the hyper crates the fast way and the fast way is when you just press open pack but then press escape really quickly afterward and just kind of repeat that process on the keyboard uh, until all the packs are open and then you can see what you got in the item stash a little bit later on. And the reason I really want to make this video is because the ultimate packs seem to be here to stay uh, with the recent release of the new items like the charismatic mandalorian armor set and the tula cord lightsaber and that stuff they were released as a direct sale but bioware also updated the ultimate packs to include those items now as well and what that means is we're most likely going to see that process repeated as new items come into the cartel market so I think it would be interesting for me to at least make a video to make a one final verdict on these ultimate packs and to see how good they are. I opened up four hyper crates in my last pack opening and we had some amazing luck. The RNG seemed to be really good. Uh, we were getting some really neat items, but I want to do a, a much larger pack opening now and just make one final verdict on whether I think these things are good or not. For those of you who don't know, ultimate packs are basically just um, grand chance cubes but they have very good RNG so each pack uh, contains about three new items and those items can be anything from the cartel market the chances of getting the new items that, that have you know really recently been released are very low and so you don't really open hype, uh, ultimate packs for the chance of getting new items you more open it for just kind of getting cool stuff in general maybe making a few extra bucks on the GTN getting credits and stuff uh, it's that seems to be kind of the purpose of these ultimate packs they're more gambling but really anyone who's opening these packs with the hopes of getting a new item isn't being very uh, very smart in my opinion because the chances of that are very low and I, I would see that as a waste of money. It's much more beneficial to just get the thing on direct sale. In any case, here we go. This is 10 hyper crates opened up, uh, 30 cartel packs in each crate, which means a total of 300 cartel packs, hopefully a large enough sample size to really get a good sense of how good these packs are. And in looking at the items in the item stash, uh, we see that we have 789 new unique items, which means there was a very decent variety. Uh, as we know in the item stash, the items will, um, will stack up. Similar items will stack up no matter what they are, which means you know the 789 new items are literally just new items. For anyone who hasn't really had an updated uh, collections on the cartel market, would ha probably have a good time with these packs because they seem to give a very good variety. In any case, with regards to uh, rarity, we have 12 new platinum items as you see here. And I'll just give you guys the numbers as I'm scrolling down. 12 new platinum items, 102 gold items, 310 silver items, and then the rest are bronze. So those are the raw numbers. With 12 platinum items, that is over one platinum item in every hyper crate. And one thing we also know from these ultimate packs in the description of them is that Bioware says that with each new pack you open, you have a higher chance of getting a platinum item. Now this did seem to, uh, to come into effect with this pack opening with 12 platinum items. I think that's one of the best uh, platinum item drop rates I've seen. I mean, that's more than one in each crate. And with 102 gold items, that's approximately 10 gold items per hyper crate, or in other words, one gold item for every three cartel packs. That's not too shabby of an RNG because with the older cartel packs, we were getting something more along the lines of three to four gold items per hyper crate. Now granted, those were new items, but still, we can see that the RNG has markedly improved with these ultimate packs. And this is something you can just observe with all the other people doing pack openings or also the pack opening I did right when these packs were released. It, these very clearly give you a lot more gold items. And then 310 silver items, a lot of them uh, are decorations and armor sets, so it's not all junk. But talking about junk, let's get into a real discussion about the quality here because the numbers are clear. The, these packs have decent RNG, but you know, not all platinum items are the same, not all gold items are the same. And one thing I think is really important to notice here is with these platinum items, um, they seem to be the really weird platinum items. 
or in other words, the ones that aren't very high value. The only kind of new platinum items that are that are genuinely platinum is the Defiant Vented Dual Saber and the Unstable Arbiter's Dual Saber. Those are two new platinum items that were released in cartel packs and are very high value, are relatively high value on the GTN. But the other ten platinum items are actually the ones that became platinum only after platinum even became a thing. These are the items like Fortitude, Intrepidity, uh, Grit, and all those weapons. And those are basically weapons that you get from the Cartel Bazaar vendors. And those have been there since very early on in the game. They used to be gold rarity, some were even silver, but now they've become platinum because they are only really available through Grand Champs cubes. And so they have a really low drop rate. They are quite rare in the game, but they don't sell for as much on the GTN. So that's just something to note here. A lot of platinum items, but not all of them are the really good stuff, like the Dark Honor Guard's Unstable Saber or the Unstable Peacemaker or that kind of stuff. Even if you get a lot of platinum items, there can be a lot of, of junk still there. And I can tell you from my own experience, these are quite difficult to sell. I mean, it, it caters to a very niche market. Very few people are interested in paying millions of credits for like these, uh, these PVP weapons, like Fortitude and Grit and stuff. Anyways, a very similar case can be seen for the gold items as well. I think the, the bottom line is there's a very big variety in terms of, of the quality of items. For some of the gold items, as we can see on screen, they're the really good stuff like the Shadow Hands Command Throne, some really nice armor sets. I pulled out Revan's armor set in this one. There's also a host of really good decorations. I mean, we got a ton of fountains like the, like the Elegant Fountain, the Zakulin Fountain. Um, we also got the Yavin Combat Arena, the Pit of the Sarlacc. I mean, these are some really amazing gold decorations. And one thing I found from my previous opening as well was that a lot of these decorations seem to drop and they do sell very well in the GTN. I was selling tons of them for like 20, 25 million. So there are some very high value decorations, some very high value armor sets and mounts. But on the other hand, as we know, there's also a ton of junk. And that junk can be seen here with a lot of these mounts that barely sell for a million credits on the GTN, like the Ivory Cheldu, the Jungle Gundark, the Vectron Predator. These are kind of low value gold items. So speaking in completely technical terms, they are rare items because they're gold rarity and they don't draw very much from cartel packs. But when you just put them on the GTN aesthetically or, or just because players don't really want it, uh, it doesn't seem to sell for a lot. It's also not the, the best to collect. So in that case, you know, we can't say just because there is, you know, 100 gold items that necessarily it's worth it because a lot of those gold items are not of the highest quality. Another big thing to note from these is those gold items include things like those uh, single pieces, you know, things like the, um, the Dark Initiate's robe or the ceremonial headdress or, um, there was even like an encrypted cube that dropped and that like grants you a mission and stuff. And it sounds cool, but I can tell you not a lot of people are interested in that stuff. If you're talking purely from selling on the GTN, and I'm assuming a lot of you guys are interested in kind of the credit value of this as opposed to collectible value. If you're interested in just collecting stuff for your own collection, the Ultimate Packs I think are a great buy. They give you a very nice variety. It's very exciting to open them, but only for people who don't have a very uh, completed collection. If you do have a completed collection, the chances of you getting repeat items are quite high. Anyways, that kind of goes through the gold and platinum stuff because I think that's what's most interesting. With regards to the silver items, they were quite a nice host of very expensive, highly sought after rare silver items that I got. And just to name a few, a lot of the decorations are very nice and high value. Uh, there were also some really nice armor sets like Jirail's armor set or the Exposed Extroverts armor set. We also got jetpacks. So a lot of the silver items were good. Of course, there's a lot of junk associated with that, but I guess no one really expects silver items to be as good as gold or, or platinum. But in some cases they can be. I can, ten I can tell you guys like the Exposed Extroverts armor set is something that's for a lot on the GTN. Now one thing I did do was actually decide to go through all the gold and platinum items and do a rough estimation of from my own experience what I think they would sell for on the GTN and then kind of come up with a total sum of just how much I made from that. Now one thing to note with these hyper crates is they seem to sell anywhere from the range of like 80 to 90 million credits each on the GTN and they do indeed seem to be selling at that price meaning very very high value. And so let's take the price of 80 million credits. Um, let's say each hyper crate could have potentially sold for 80 million. I could have sold 10 crates for 800 million credits. So let's say that's kind of the base credit value. And opening the packs, I can tell you, if I'm being more on the conservative side, 
I could have sold all of the gold and platinum items for at least 630 million credits okay so that's just the gold and uh, and uh, platinum items that's not including all the silver and bronze stuff and that's also me being very conservative so I'm very very confident I could have sold it for that price and so what that means is these are definitely worth it to open this you know it's not just like sell the packs and that's going to give you the best value I mean in opening these packs I'm sure I could have made easily if I sold everything actually sat down and sold like 700 plus items it would take a lot of time and energy but I would easily I think be able to make over a billion credits and so it's definitely kind of worth it to open now of course not everyone's opening 10 hyper crates a lot of people will be opening maybe one or two and so if if you're in that position um, I would say it's not the worst bet to open them it's a lot more fun to open them and and it's exciting and of course there's a chance that you could lose credits but if there was ever a cartel pack that would actually give you a good chance at making your credits back and really hitting some really nice jackpot items I mean the ultimate packs are definitely the way to go from what I've seen and this is kind of like my final verdict I was trying to keep this video under 10 minutes but as a final verdict I'll conclude up here um, very very good RNG we have to say that with a really high chance of getting a platinum item very high chance of getting a gold item uh, the silver items are very nice quality as well uh, so with RNG it's very good with regards to quality of items it really varies and I think that's where the gambling comes in like it really depends upon whether you're gonna get you know a Revan's armor set as your gold item or like the ceremonial headdress worth like 500,000 credits you know it really depends I mean ideally they or theoretically they have the same drop rate because they're both gold but they have vastly different credit values on the GTN and also collectible value Additionally, in examining all the items that I got, the chances of getting new items are very, very low. I looked at kind of, the, let, let's say for example, the new items that were released with like the Dark Honor Guard Sabers and the Flare Prosperity and stuff. I looked through it and the only new item I really received was the Flare Prosperity. Um, I didn't receive any of the other new items and I opened up 10 Hyper Crates, which means, oh, I received the Curved Vibra Sword. So I received like two new items. Um, so what that means is the chances of getting new items are very low So do not open up hyper crates with the hopes that you're gonna get one of the new items That is just absurd. You definitely have a very very low chance of doing that and Finally should you sell the packs individually or open them? It's really up to you selling them individually is a very safe a way of making sure you get a really decent number of credits These things do sell for a lot uh, Individual cartel packs can sell from any, from anywhere from three to five million credits Hyper crates can sell anywhere from 80 to 90 million credits if you're depending on your server and also how much people are willing to undercut you I guess but in my experience and I have sold uh, quite a number of these they do sell very well at those prices um, so it's very Kind of a good route to just sell the packs but if you're more of a gambler and you want to kind of try your luck and have some more fun with opening them these are definitely packs that are worth it to open um, even if you're just using your 500 cartel coin monthly stipend or if you've got gathered up some referral link clicks from from paying people to use your link all of that stuff these ultimate packs are definitely a good buy uh, props to buyware from for making packs with some decent rng but I still think they can really improve their system by doing things like reducing the price of the direct sales. I think they're way too high, uh, like 5,400 cartel coins for the Tula Cord Saber and stuff. Now that the direct sales are really the only way to get new items, they really should think about lowering the prices so that people don't have to pay insane amounts for, for just like one game, you know. Uh, Swotar, you know, I, I get it. It's cool. People want to customize their items, but I just think those prices are really insane. And one thing that direct sales have done is that they have really bumped up the price on the GTN. So if, you, if you're someone who doesn't want to pay any cartel coins for anything and just wants to buy off the GTN, I mean, the prices you're paying are way higher uh, and they would be lower if those items actually dropped uh, significantly from the cartel packs, like the old system and how that worked. And also one thing I really think they should do is, is make a return to, to giving us cartel market certificates, reputation, that kind of stuff. I like that system. But anyways, I think these are topics for another video. That kind of concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys found it informative and help you make some decisions with regards to how you want to deal with the ultimate cartel packs in the future because no doubt we are set to, you know, Swoktar is going to expansion now with 6.0. We are going to receive new kind of cool cartel market items Items, new unstable sabers and mounts and stuff and um, the ultimate cartel pack system seems to be here to stay and so hopefully this video will help you make a decision about these hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one